Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Time for my third September quarterly report video. And in today's edition, we're going to be looking at a big tin can. And the whole reason I decided to focus on this company was twofold. First of all, I do own a very small holding in this company. And the second reason is because the market seemed to really like big tin cans call a report with the share price increasing by over 20% on the 27th of October. Now, I used to be fairly enamored with software companies and Big Tin Can is a software company. And one of the reasons I was quite enamored in software companies was because of the supposed scale behind these companies. For instance, they build out or they develop the software and then when new customers come in fold, the incremental cost of these new customers should be absolutely zero because you don't have to build any more software to uh, for these new customers. However, that's not the best way to look at software companies because this is a highly competitive space. Big Ten Can, who's all about sales and enablement, have a multitude of competitors. And because Big Ten Can has a multitude or a plethora of competitors, even if they win new customers, they still have to spend a lot of money to maintain those customers and to find other customers. So you will see increasing costs in regards of sales, uh, research and development, and other stuff like administration just to maintain their current customer base and to find new customers. So the old thinking that these companies, these software companies, should have tremendous scale, and that's why they have significant multiples attached to them, I think is the wrong way to look at, look at these companies because of that competitive space. And you'll be able to see what I've been talking about during the rest of this video. So even though I am a small shareholder of these company, there are a lot of things to dislike about not only Big Tin Can, but other software-related companies. So Big Ten Can have developed a sales enablement platform, although they call it an intelligent enablement platform. And to be fair with you, I understand the thinking and I understand the worth of these sales enablement platforms because you really want to build or improve the sales or seller buyer relationship. And you can improve that relationship between by learning, by content and by engagement. Hence these sales enablement platforms. Now, just a few facts in regards to Big Tin Can has been around for over one decade, founded in 2011, listed on the ASX on 24th of March, 2017. Current CEO is David Keane. There's a little bit of skin in the game, 4.1% holding. I'm not sure if he was a founder or co-founder, but if he's not, it's good to see that the CEO does have a little bit of a holding within the company. And by far the largest shareholder, maybe not by far, but the largest shareholder is SQN Investors, and they have a 13.7% stake in the company. Now, the market of this company has been quite volatile during 2022. If we go back to February, the market of Big Tin Cam was $480 million. That was a share price of $0.88. Cents. The last time I did a video on this company was in June of this year, and that point, the share price reached a low of $0.45. Cents. And that point or that price to share, the markup of Big Tin Can was 249 million. However, the share price has rebounded from there. Um, in fact, the share price hit a double bottom uh, about a month ago, and the share price has rebounded really nice. And the current markup of this company is 365 million. Then we'll have a look at the charts, the longer term charts and the shorter term charts for Big Tin Can. And you'll be able to see not only a double bottom at around 45 cents. You'll also be able to see a double top um, at around about a dollar and fifty or dollar seventy-five cents. So double top and double bottoms tend to be fairly strong technical signals. So potentially forty-five cents for this company is a low point of the share price, and it's also good to see that the share price has rallied on the back of the appendix four C. So the market has liked this quarterly report from the company, and that is actually one thing I'm looking for is share price rallies on the back of positive financial news. And you really want to see a share price rally on the back of an Appendix 4C or a yearly report or a half yearly report or better yet, a profit 
upgrade. That's the one thing I am looking for every single day. When I open up the ASX announcements is I am looking for profit upgrades or on the flip side, looking also looking for profit downgrades. Now, this particular chart really is related to that rant I had at the beginning of this video that a lot of these software companies have no scale or are showing absolutely zero scale or very little operating leverage thus far. And this is a perfect example of what we're seeing in a lot of tech companies in the world right now. So what this particular slide is showing you is the growth in revenue from 2013. This is a yearly growth. So even though this company did list on the ASX in 2017, we still have a long history of revenue because when the company did list, they did provide those uh, financial numbers uh, prior to their listing. So revenue has increased from $1.7 million, which is in the blue here, to $108 million. But the other thing I've included here alongside gross margins and a positive thing for Big Tin Candy is that gross margins have been improving over time. But the other thing I've included here is expenses. And the one thing you'll notice is every single year, total expenses is just a little bit higher than total revenues. And it remains every single year just a little bit higher than total revenues. In fact, the gap has been increasing. So even though the percentage gap has been diminishing, the total gap has actually been increasing. So if we go back to the year they actually listed on the ASX, revenue was $9 million, total expenses was $13 million. So the gap between them was $4 million. The next year was $6 million, then $4 million, then $8 million, then eight, and in the most financial year, the difference between total revenues and expenses was seven million, but the percentage difference has been decreasing. And this is one of the reasons why I am not as enamored with tech companies or these sort of companies, these software companies anymore, is because of that competitive space. And just the need to grow revenue at such quick rates is because of this land grab mentality. We have to get as many customers as possible before our competitors grab those customers. And that's why the majority of these sort of companies, these software companies, haven't really cared about profitability. They've just cared about revenue growth. And Big Tin Can has been uh, one of these companies that has just focused on revenue growth. But, and this is a little bit of a positive slant here, but their tune has changed over the past year. And the reason it's changed is because what's been happening in the world, what's been happening with interest rates, and the very fact that these sort of companies have seen their valuation, their share price, take a massive hit because of their focus, their sole focus on revenue growth, and their lack of focus on profitability. Another thing about Big Tin Can is this company is highly acquisitive. They do make a lot of acquisitions. In fact, last year, they made a fairly big acquisition of one of the competitors called Brain Shark. And in my opinion, this was a pretty good acquisition in terms of the price Big Tin Can had to make um, of Brain Shark. I thought it was a pretty, it was priced pretty well. And unfortunately, the share price has decreased significantly from then. I think the share price was about $1.50 after they made the acquisition. The market really liked the acquisition. I think the price of the acquisition, but the share price has fallen since then. So what I've shown on this slide is shares on issue since this company lists on the ASX, which in fact, it has more than doubled from $176 million to $430 million. I've also included cash acquisitions, which is in black here. And the most recent acquisition was $125 million in cash. And the green is the issuance of common stock. So every single year since Big Tin Can has listed on the ASX, this company has done a capital raising. And the last three years, those capital raisings have amounted to $64 million, $36 million, and in financial year 22, $133 million. I am hopeful, unless they make further significant acquisitions, that this run of capital raisings have come to an end for the company and for the sake of its shareholders. Probably the first thing I should mention here is I've completely forgotten we're now into financial year 23. So even though this says September financial year 21, it's actually September financial year 22. So this is the a September quarter from one year ago, not two years ago. So what I'm doing now is I want to compare last year's September quarter 
to this year, September, September quarter. And I want to see how much receipts have increased or decreased, possibly. And I want to see also the operating cash flow um, of the company. Has it gone from highly operating cash flow negative to operating cash flow positive? Because in the September quarter of financial year 22, Big Ten Can was operating cash flow negative by almost $5 million. They were burning through a lot of cash uh, one year ago. Now, this was a quarter they made that acquisition of Brain Shark. That's why uh, they raised $136 million and spent $118 million on that acquisition. And the cash on hand at the end of this quarter was $55.7 million. The other thing you have to take into account when you look at big tin can statement of cash flows is they do spend a lot of money on intellectual property, which is just research and development, if I remember correctly. I think capitalized research and development. And for this particular quarter, that was $2.6 million. So if you include that in the cash or the free cash flow, this company was actually uh, free cash flow negative by about $7.5 five million dollars now let's have a look at the big tin can september quarter for financial year 23 not financial year 22 and the main thing i want to do is just compare the cash receipts from this quarter to one year ago and just to see whether this company has increased their cash receipts at a greater rate than they're spending because if they have possibly the company has become operating cash flow positive and they have big tin can was operating cash flow positive in this particular quarter by $254,000. Now they weren't free cash flow positive because remember intellectual property, they spent $3.5 million on intellectual property in this particular quarter. And that's why cash on hand actually fell by over $3.5 million. So let's have a look to see how this company became operating cash flow positive in this quarter. So it was a fairly big turnaround from one year ago. So receipts up $23.3 million. So obviously their spending did not increase at a quicker rate than the cash receipts growth. So advertising marketing up 1.3 million, staff costs up 12.8 million and administration costs up 4 million. So spending on those three areas was up about $18 million. So the increase in cash receipts grew $5 million greater than the increase in those three categories. Now, the one concern I have is the spending on staff. $27.6 million on staff costs in one quarter. So that's over $100 million per year. So I don't quite understand why this company has so much staff. And I think this comes back to my initial rant at the start of this video, that this company is, and a lot of these other sort of companies like Big Tin Can, it's all about the land grab. You want to get as many sales people as possible to get as many customers as quick as possible. So that's one area I could think about where Big Tin Can may, may make some cost savings in the future. Decrease the staff costs, decrease the amount of staff they have on their books. Now, I'm just going to look at the shift in focus of the management of Big Tin Can. From a few years ago, actually only one year ago, we have seen a significant shift in their focus. So one year ago, they were solely had their blinkers on. They only cared about analyzed recurring revenue and revenue growth. So in this particular slide, which was one of the first slides in their Pennies 4C uh, one year ago, the presentation, it was just all about the increase in analyzed recurring revenue over the past three years, they also looked at revenue and the amount of staff they had, deployments and customers with ARR over $100,000. Now let's have a look at the first slide in their financial section of their financial year 23 September quarter presentation. And you'll just be able to see the total shift in focus for big tin cans management. And this was their first slide in their financial segment. If you go past or look at previous years, they didn't care about operating cash flow at all. Well, it seems like they didn't care at all. But this was their first slide, and they really focused on this. So customer receipts have been growing, but look at that operating cash flow. So they were operating cash flow negative uh, over the last three years in the first quarter of those financial years. But in this first quarter of financial year 23, Big Tin Can was operating cash flow positive by $300,000. So. This company has shifted their focus to profitability and free and operating cash flow. So not quite as focused on that revenue growth, not quite as focused on analyzed recurring revenue, because I think 
your overall sentiment in the market around these sort of companies that have been burning through a lot of cash over the past few years has changed. And the management of these sort of companies have to change how they're thinking. And it does look like Big Tin Can and their management are doing exactly that. Now, one of the things that did get me a little bit excited about Big Tin Can's first quarter of financial year 23 was found on page 14. In this little section on the far left here, it just mentioned they were $300,000 um, positive in the operations. But they also mentioned here, operating cash spend included $2.8 million in one-off severance and business adjustment costs in the quarter. So if you take away those one-offs, this company was operating cash flow positive by $3.1 million in the first quarter of financial year 23. And then if you also take into account the intellectual property spend, which was $3.5 million, this company was almost free cash flow positive. So if they can maintain this momentum moving forward and be $3 million operating cash flow positive in the second quarter and maintain that into the third and fourth quarter and then become free cash flow positive, I think this company has hit a very important inflection point moving forward. And I think this is one of the reasons why the market did get excited about Big Tin Can's first quarter of their financial year 23. Now, in saying all that, I still am going to be focusing on how this company's receipts and their costs have been growing over time. So this is Big Tin Can's receipts history. Now, I've also included their cost history on this going all the way back to the first quarter this company had listed on the ASX. And if we look at the first year this company had listed on the ASX, they did experience one quarter where they were operating cash flow positive. I still remember that quarter and thinking, ooh, this company looks really interesting. But you'll notice through time how the cost of this company almost mirrors the increase in cash receipts. It's slightly behind on a analyzed, but on a quarterly uh, compound basis. So receipts have been growing at 11.7% per quarter. Costs have been growing at 11.1% per quarter. So it seems like, and this is just me making a stupid assumption, that it seems like management get together and say, well, we think our receipts are going to be up 10% in the next quarter. So we should probably should raise our spending by 10% as well, because it's just uncanny how the costs have been mirroring the rise in receipts over the past five years for this company. And it seems like always the receipts are just a little bit behind the cost. On occasion, you will see uh, one quarter where the company is operating cash flow positive, but typically it's only one quarter where the company is operating cash flow positive, and then the next quarter they go back to being operating cash flow negative. So that's why, even though this was a good quarter for the company, we need to see this company maintain this momentum in the next few quarters because history has shown us that as soon as this company hits one quarter where they are operating cash flow positive, the company starts to spend lots of money and they become operating cash flow negative in the next few quarters. Now let's have a look at a couple of charts. The first chart here is the weekly chart going back to when the company listed on the ASX. And as it, overall, it hasn't been bad news for our shareholders who have been with this company since they did list because back then the share price was around about or just under 25 cents and currently the share price is above 60 cents. Um, so the share price has more than doubled since this company did list on the ASX, but the share price has been a high as $1 and about 57 cents. And that was in, when was that? October of 2020. Now the company made that acquisition of BrainShark about one year ago, and that's when we saw the share price reach those old highs uh, back in 2020 and then pull back. So that was our double top at around about $1.55. And as soon as the company made that acquisition, as soon as it reached that double top, the share price went into a well-defined downtrend. In fact, the share price fell from $1.56 all the way down to a low of about $0.45 cents in about well, probably just less than one year of trading. You just see the share price just continually fell from that or during that period. Now, 45 cents is a pretty strong support level for this company. And that support level actually developed way back in 2018. And initially it wasn't support, it was actually resistance. And we have seen the share price bounce off 45 cents twice now in the past three months, back in June and also three weeks ago. 
And if you look at the last candlestick, so these are weekly candlesticks, you notice a really long green candlestick. And typically when you see those really long green candlesticks, particularly if they're on high volume, particularly if they coincide with some positive financial news, this could be the breakout in the share price. Unfortunately, we do have a fair bit of resistance in the 75 cents to 80 cents range because after the share price did reach that low at 45 cents in June, we saw a pretty good bounce. And you'll be able to see that bounce when we look at the daily chart. So actually, let's have a look at the daily chart right now. Now to the daily chart for Big Tin Can, and this goes back to almost one year ago. And about one year ago, towards the end of October, start of November, the share price of Big Tin Can moved into a well-defined downtrend. In fact, we'll call it a bear market for Big Tin Can. And during that bear market, we lasted about nine months or so. There was one bear market rally in March of this year. Share price actually increased 50% in about one month, but it was on low volume. So whenever I see a share price of a company rallying or even the overall market rallying and it's on low volume, that means there's not much strength in that rally. There's no one coming in believing that rally. That's the best way to put it. And you want belief in any rally. That's why the rally faltered. It petered out and the share price got above 90 cents. And that's why the share price fell from that 95 cents range all the way down to the low of 45 cents, which was reached in June. And that 45 cent low was tested recently, about three weeks ago, and that 45 cent level held firm. In fact, we have seen a share price rally on the back of this Appendix 4C. And the most hopeful thing moving forward is on the October 28th, the day after the company released their Appendix 4C, we didn't see major selling coming in. Sometimes after share price of a company rallies, say over 20%, the next day there will be some profit taking, some selling. And we didn't really see that for Big Tin Can, which shows us that there might be some strength moving forward for this company. Ideally, I'd like to see the share price at least go sideways from here. I don't want to see any big sell-off over the next few trading days. Ideally, I'd like to see the share price actually move up from here. And ideally, moving on from that, if it does move up, I'd like to see 82 and a half cents broken because that was the most recent highs we saw in August of this year. And if 82 and a half cents is broken, that could be meaning the share price of this company has moved into an uptrend. And if there is more positive financial news from this company, that would be a really good thing for this company and its shareholders moving forward. So many things to look forward to. Uh, in the next few months for Big Tin Can. And hopefully, most of the news flow from this company will be positive. That's all I have for this look at Big Tin Can September quarter of financial year 23, not financial year 22. Can't believe it's taken me this long to realize we are in, we are in a new financial year. If you have any thoughts, any disagreements with what anything I've said in this video, any questions, please leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.